Gina here with Heroes Mind High School Academy. It's good to have you here. Hi. Today we are in lesson six. This is week six. It's good to have you back. This is our science and technology class. We have been talking about plants. We've started a new unit. We started unit two last week. And so we're in the second chapter or second week of this new unit. <clears throat> Today we're going to be talking about plants and how they are living things. And we'll go, we'll be able to discuss that more thoroughly. Let's open up with the word of prayer and we'll get right into today's lesson. We thank you, Lord, for this time we have to learn and grow. We seek to do the best we can and add to what we know. We love you, God, with all our hearts and to others' love we show. Pleasing you is our goal. Now to our lesson we should go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good work. So, um, you're alive. How do you know you're living? Well, I can talk, I can eat, I sleep at night. You can name a few things, right? Yeah, well, you're living. A lot of people don't, or some people may not realize that plants are alive. They're alive, they're living, they are alive. We're going to talk about eight ways, um, eight ways that you can prove that a plant is absolutely living. It is a living thing, it's a living thing. Now, it's not alive in the same way that you're alive, but it is living. And I, yeah, that's an important distinction because um, there are some people who are vegetarians. Like, I don't want to eat meat because meat is, you know, I don't want to kill an animal. But they'll kill a plant. Um, the reason for that is because plants are alive, but they're alive in a different way, okay? So let's talk about the first way you know that a plant is living. The very first way you know a plant is living is because it moves. It moves, isn't that one way you know you're alive? It has movement, yes. Plants move their, um, their roots at the very bottom. They will move um, their stems as well. Like if they are wanting some more sunlight, this, the flower itself will actually turn to absorb more flower. It's more sun rays from the um in that direction so it'll turn and absorb the sun it'll move its roots at the bottom um if it detects something it'll move down there so that's one way you know plant is alive movement another way you know that a plant is alive is because it respires it respires what is respiration to respire just means to breathe so inhale through your nose exhale through your mouth Ah, that's always so lovely. Yeah, so respiration involves taking in oxygen and releasing carbon dioxide. And the plants do that. They do that. They breathe. They inhale like you do. And they exhale. So because of that, they are, that's the second way you know that they're alive. Um, the third way you know that they're alive is because of they eat. Plants eat. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever heard someone say, go get some fertilizer? They're gonna add some fertilizer. To, they wanna feed the plant. But um, plants by themselves, without any extra fertilizer, without human's aid, they can feed themselves. They do this by preparing their own food. We call it glucose. And they do it through photosynthesis. They take from the sun, they'll convert some things and um, through the process of photosynthesis, and they'll produce glucose. And that glucose is later stored in and changed, if you will, to starch, we will go as humans go and eat the plant and receive what we call carbohydrates from the plant or starch. Like, oh, that was a starchy meal. That was a you know meal full of carbohydrates because we've taken from the plant's food. So the plant has created food, stored it as uh, starch in its like roots and in different parts of its, of its uh, depending on what kind of plant it is. It, there, there are fewer carbs or, or uh, starch, if you will, in leafy greens as there is in something like a t potato or something. But it stores starch within itself, and then we go and eat it, and we receive the energy that it created. And so that's kind of nice. It's a great process that God created. Um, some other plants, however, do not do that conversion with the sun and making glucose and storing it as starch. What they do is they'll actually feed on other dead animals or dead plants, it's true such as fungi. Fungi will absolutely feed on a dead, uh, it'll, it'll feed on dead plants, dead animals, <clears throat> which is how it eats. There are also some carnivorous plants. Carnivorous just means a plant that actually eats meat, such as the um, 
Uh, we call it the sundew plant. It will eat a butterfly or a bee. Truly, there are some plants that eat meat, so watch out, don't put your finger too close. Right, so that's the third way we know that uh, plants are alive because they eat the nutrition, or you can just simply say they feed on food. The fourth way we know that they're alive is that they get irritable sometimes. Their irritability really, really is true. Okay, so the mimosa plant is called the touch me not plant because whenever you go to touch it, it will fold in its leaves and droop. It's folded and droop because it's a very sensitive plant. So some plants are irritable. That's another way you know it's alive. Okay, the fifth way we know that it's alive is because of its growth. Have you ever seen a small plant and they go back a couple weeks later and it's bigger? Have you ever seen a small apple tree and then go back a couple years later and see that it's an adult tree? Have you ever seen grass? and then you watch the grass grow. Perhaps you have the, your lawnmower um, helper, maybe your father takes care of the lawn. But in any situation, you go out and they'll cut the lawn and in about two weeks or three weeks, you have to call the uh, gardener back to help you in the lawn again, help with your lawn so it's because they grow. So that's another way you know that it's alive. Do you grow? Yes. Do you get irritable sometimes? Yes. Do you eat and respire and move? Yes. Okay, another way you know that plants are alive is because they excrete. Excretion, or you might say poop. Plants poop. Well, <laughs> but they do it in a way. I'll, I'll explain. Whenever the leaves have um, uh, contain waste, so you have a really big tree and uh, inside some of the leaves are uh, maybe as, a, as waste, maybe an excess of carbon dioxide or something like that, it will actually shed its leaves onto the ground. Have you ever gone out and seen the leaves on the ground around a tree? That's because it's shedding those, shedding those leaves. That's one way that it excretes waste from, its, um, from the rest of its self. <laughs> okay. So another way you know that a plant is alive is because it reproduces. Humans, we reproduce. Um, we have babies and children. We have you know, um, little boys and little girls, and we have babies all the time. And um, so does the tree or plant. It can reproduce by using seeds. Have you ever gone out to your mommy's garden and sowed seeds? Yeah, that's one way. Another way is by using parts of a plant. You can use a part of a plant to make it uh, to make a larger plant to, to help it grow. An example of such a thing is um, whenever you go out and take like a um, part of a plant, we would call that budding. You take uh, maybe a, a tea cut of a of a larger tree and you go and sort of tie it to a, a small tree. You can just watch it just grow almost as though it was natural, almost as though it was there all along. Uh, we call that process budding. There's also grafting, which is very similar. You could take a part of a tree. Maybe you have a large tree. You just cut it just before you get to the base of the tree. You can take it and put it onto the base of another tree, maybe a healthier tree, maybe in a different location, tie it, and very soon it'll just mend itself together as though it was natural. It's a really great process. We call that grafting. The Bible speaks of grafting as well. Somewhere in the book of Romans, maybe Romans 11 or somewhere there about um, plants can um, grow in different ways as well. Some plants can grow from a leaf. So it grows and it can reproduce. It can reproduce just means to have babies to, to produce. <laughs> okay. And um, finally, another way we know that plants are living is because they die. Have you ever had to experience death in a local experience, in a local environment? Yes, um, we've all experienced death. Everyone has to live and die. The scripture says it is appointed unto man wants to die. Everybody has to die. Um, and then the judgment. And so with that being said, everyone has to die, including plants. Plants die. There's a process to that as well. Um, some plants die after one year. We call those annual plants. Some plants die after two years. We call those biannual plants. And some plants will die after three years or more. We call those perennial plants. And if you have your workbook, you can look at some examples of those. 
Um, there are some common features that will distinguish one plant from another. Maybe look at the flower. If you want to know what is the difference between this plant and that plant. Well, some things you can look at. Look at the flowers. Huh? Look at the actual budding of the flowers. Look at the leaves. Are the leaves different? You can look at that. You can look at the stems. How strong is that tree? How strong are the stems of the tree? That's one way you can look at some differences of a plant. There is um, also uh, some plants produce fruit. That's one way you can determine what kind of plant it is. Christ said, the Lord Jesus said, a plant or tree is known by its fruit. So that's one way you can tell the difference between a plant. Some plants produce tubers. And so um, that's how you det detect the difference between one plant and another plant. There are lilies, there are roses, there are tulips, there are, you know, on and on. And there are plants that we eat from. In chapter five of unit two, we talked about different types of plants. We talked about the apple tree, the orange tree, the banana tree. There are millions of different types of plants and maybe hundreds of millions or tens of millions. In any situation, they're all very unique. And they all have a different look, a different texture, a different taste, a different, you know, they're all very unique and special. So get to know some plants in your local environment so you're able to speak about them confidently among your own peers. Please take time to complete your exercise, the lesson that, the exercise that follows this lesson. Thank you so much for coming to class, being a part of today's lesson. But until next week, God bless. I'll be your hero's body And as you study With heroes born I will be your friend So don't you